Welcome to the winter crossover. And when I say crossover, we're out having a day's fishing. And like from my background of carp match fishing and the match fishing that I do like via the seat box, we're just gonna try and cross over the two tactics. Today we're just basically trying a few different things and having a day's fishing. It's not aimed at match fishing. It's just aimed at, you know, winter fishing. Because from a personal point of view, from being a carp fisherman and a match fisherman, I see it in two different lights. So I see the winter match fishing as quite negative. And I see winter carp fishing on specific venues like this. Today we're at Shearwater and it's quite deep. Um, it's 14 foot where I'm fishing. But we, we as a carp angler would fish it completely different to how a match angler would fish in the winter. So like by that, I mean, a match angler would fish on the bottom, a carp angler wouldn't. Our go-to tactic would be to fish off the bottom and possibly um, fish with quite a bit of bait over the top. So we are literally gonna see how today rolls, see how it goes, and see if we can incorporate some off the bottom fishing into our fishing today. There you go. I think that's actually got a bit of hybrid in it. What a lovely fish. Crack and start. There's another fish. We'll just have a quick look at what baits we're going to use today and it's I've kept it dead simple. Got a little bit of ground bait. Um, I've got some pellets if I want to fish on the feet on the feed or on the bottom. Um, and mainly I'm going to be putting out a few maggots. These aren't great maggots, but I'm going to be using them just to feed and create uh, attraction up in the water column. They're, um, you know, that's literally all they're for. The noise um, of the actual feeding and the bait falling through the water is just going to encourage the fish into the swim. And then obviously my popped up hook bait is going to be up in the water column. So when they come in on it, they're going to find that straight away. Uh, and on the hook, just got two different pop-ups, 10 mil, one yellow, one white, dead simple. And that's it. And then we can just alter. I've got all my, uh, all my hook lengths on my spool. And I can just alter the depth, dead easy, fishing just a little inline lead that we can clip on and off the hook lengths. And we can change obviously from the inline lead to the uh, to the open feeder as well and that's that that's simple So that's the rod back out. I'm going to have a quick look at what I'm going to use to actually feed the peg. 
Um, right, so where I'm fishing is 75 yards out. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a fair distance. Um, it's easy for the gear. Obviously, it's not so easy to, you know, keep feeding there. And I've got just a couple of things that makes it easier for me. Obviously, being a carp angler, the first thing that I would opt for is the little mini spawn. And in certain matches, you're allowed them. In certain matches, you're not. For the matches that you're not allowed them, I just use the little horizon feeder or a bottom weighted feeder, just depending on the distance. Like these fly better for the longer distance. And what I do is as soon as that lands, just strike it out and wind the feeder straight back in. Obviously, where I'm fishing today, 75 yards out, if you were fishing, say, up to my right, I can't fish there today because there's other anglers there, um, but you could fish a lot closer to the bank because it's deeper, you've got the down wall, so you know you might only need to fish like 30 yards. You can pick and choose how far you want to fish. Um, so the bottom weighted feeder would be good for that. You could pack a load of loose particles in there, just strike it out nice and easy. Um, and, and that's it, dead simple. So I can just clip them on, uh, on my fishing rod. I've just got like a, an inline stem and I can change that from an open alloy feeder, the inline lead, and I can change my hook length whether I want a short hook length or I want to try a longer one. Like I say, it's 14 foot deep out there and I can pick and choose where in the water column that I'm going to fish, depending on how the weather changes or how I feel the session's going. In terms of like quantities of bait and what you'd actually feed, like I'm quite a positive angler. I always have been. I don't like just chucking it out, sitting there and waiting. I'm a great believer that if there's a fish in your peg, like you can catch it. Um, and if they're not in your peg, you have to do something to encourage them into your peg, either that, or you have to go to the fish. So like you need to change where you're fishing because the fish are somewhere else. This time of year, I'd be looking at using like, you know, plenty of maggots fishing for carp, um, micro pellets, and maybe a little bit of corn. And three, like three pints of maggots, obviously, you know, just do up a bait box for the micros and that, that'll see you through, that's plenty. And the way I feed it, is you sort of wanna, you wanna encourage a bite. If you just sort of chuck out every now and again, and it's, it's no good, you wanna sort of encourage a bite. So you want like 10 casts, get a bit of bait going through the water columns, something to signal to a fish like, oh, what's that? Like carp are really curious creatures. They always come to a bit of noise. On venues like this that get carp fished, they associate, the, the spom especially, they associate that with food. Um, doesn't necessarily mean that they want to feed all the time, but they will all, it's just like a second nature that they'll always go to that noise, they'll always go to the commotion and just, let's have a look. It's a bit like if you, if you go to a party, you might have had tea and then you go to the party, there could be a buffet. The first thing I always do is walk straight to the buffet and sound it out. I'll be like, yeah, well, I'm not that hungry, but I'll have a bit of the old chocolate fondue at the end of the table. It's, and I think it's a real similar situation. They'll always have a look, um, and if they're willing to have a go, um, they will. And that's the great thing with fishing off the bottom, is that if they come into your peg, and if that hook bait is just up in the water in front of them, the only thing that they can pick up the hook bait with is their mouth, and by that time it's a game over, it's a mistake, you've caught the fish. I think it's, it's definitely a tactic worth looking at. For me, like, you know, winter carp fishing, they spend an awful lot of time off the bottom and yeah, it's got to be worth a look. We're just going to look at the terminal tackle for today. Really, really simple. I've got two, two things. I've got the little inline lead, which these come on like a smaller stem. So all I've got is the stem from the open alloy feeder and put the lead on that. And this way, they're both interchangeable. So if I want to fish on the bottom with the feeder, then that's fine, I can put that on. And obviously, you know, trying to fish off the bottom, all I've got to do is slide that off, slide the lead on, and the same, all I've got is a, just a quick change swivel in the end, so I can change my hook length from, say, a four inch hook length when I was fishing the method, to a, uh, to a four, a 12, a 10 foot hook length with the lead system, and that's it. They're dead simple. And I've just got two rods clipped up at the same distance, um, which to be honest is, is quite an important thing just in general fishing anyway, being as accurately as you can possibly be all the time, 
definitely pays off. Um, something I've got from like my feeder fishing over the years and from a carp fishing as well. Just being on that spot every single time, making sure you hit the clip nice and both rods clipped up at the same distance, especially if you're using a separate feeding rod, which, you know, in some cases you can. And to do that, just use me, me marker sticks, wrap it up. And I've also got a little tip um, that I've never seen another match angler actually using it. And to me, I think it's like, I think it's absolutely wonderful. It's perfect for this sort of fishing where you can be catching skimmers and then all of a sudden you hook a carp and you've got to let it go. You know, you're fishing a big open water lake. If you've got to let it run off, you can just take it out the clip and you can clip it up when you're winding back in. Um, and it just saves you having to rewrap all the time around the sticks. And I'll show you that in a minute. So that's the rod all clipped up, well, to the right distance. I'm gonna clip this round the uh, line clip now. Can rest that on my roller. And I'm gonna put a little elastic marker on. This is so simple for any type of feeder fishing or even bomb fishing, if you know, pinging pellets, whatever you wanna be doing, but just accuracy wise, it is so simple. So all you do is you just lie the elastic next to the line, go round your two fingers, and then it, you can get the loop, and you just go round through the loop and round the main line four times. Pull it tight. Snip off your tag ends without cutting through your main line. And then you can see can slide that down gently right next to your clip and that way if you've got one like unclip because you've hooked a carp you can let it go and then clip it back up on the way in or you can just chuck back out wait till you go through the rings and clip it back up and it saves you getting off your box and having to rewrap all your rods and obviously if you're a feeder fishing on the bottom for bream or little skimmers and you think the fish are backing off you you can just let a bit of line off and you can come back to where you were fishing before great little tip That's the complete setup. So for this, because you're using long hook length as well, you want to make sure you've got a decent rod. I've got a 13 foot XD, um, 6,000 reel. And you know, that's just because we're fishing 75 yards, which is a decent distance today. I'm going to start off with a four foot hook length. It's all set up. And as a, for a hook bait, I've just gone with a little a yellow pop up. And then Instead of using a boilie stop, I've just put a maggot in there because I'm feeding some maggots over the top. I've just literally used a maggot as a boilie stop, nice and simple. Um, obviously you will notice that this is a barbed hook. Uh, on this fishery is actually a barbed hook only policy. Obviously a lot of other places are barbless, so you have to change that accordingly to the, uh, to the fishery rules. Um, but yeah, that's it. We'll chuck her out. That didn't take long. Got one on that shorter hook length, popped up off the lead. So they're obviously sat up in the water column as well as catching a few fish on the bottom. It is, you know, this fish here is a bream. Um, so I'm not sure. I might have to come a little bit higher off the bottom to maybe locate a carp. You know, if I was carp fishing, I'd be fishing a bit higher off the bottom, but I thought I'd just start on this because obviously I'd fed a bit of bait and I didn't know if it might have pulled a few down. But it might work out that I'm going to have to come up a little bit higher to, uh, to maybe try and find a carp. There you go. Well, that's a bream, three foot off the bottom. Try and find a carp now.
Oh. <laughs> See you later, mate. There you go. We've had an awesome days fishing, you know, what would be positive carp tactics, and we've caught a lot of fish on and off the bottom. Not caught a carp, but we've had a great day's bream fishing, you know, using positive carp style tactics, a crossover between the two, and just goes to show that it's fish all the way through the water column, really, to be caught. And uh, yeah, what, what a great day's fishing. I'm going to get these back because these tall firs behind me are blocking out the light a little bit. And uh, it also looks like it's going to absolutely tank it down. But yeah, enjoy your fishing.